It is day number nine on our passage. It's also my 33rd birthday. I don't have any cake. I do have some Fig Newtons though. I'm running low on those. I'm running low on a lot of food. Uh, for some reason I was thinking this passage might only take two weeks, but it's going much, much slower. Probably three weeks at least now. We'll be okay. Maybe I'll catch myself a big tuna for my birthday. That'd be great. I got my second second line in there, so fingers crossed for that. Feeling good. Never caught a, caught a fish on a passage with a besides a flying fish. So maybe today will be the day. Okay, I'm gonna put out a third fishing line, and I'll use this handrail and I'll use my spinnaker pole to get that way out over on the side so they don't tangle up. All right. So hand line number one. I got the bungee in here. This is to keep it from ripping the hook out of the fish's mouth. Uh, and then hand line number two. It's a little lighter duty. One. And that's going out on the, uh, the spinnaker pole, getting it so they don't tangle up. And I got the fishing pole over there. Um, and they've all got different lures. And trying everything, basically. If it, if it doesn't work, it's just, I don't know what to say. I mean, I've got like lots of people that give me different tips and lures and, and stuff, and I'm trying it all, so. Today is the, the day. It's gonna happen. And if not today, I've still got 1,100 more miles to catch a fish. Oh man, we got something on the line. And I don't think it's seaweed this time. Did it! I caught my first fish on an ocean passage. Get a knife. I'm sure I probably could have got a little bit more meat off of there, but that's the first fish I've played in a long time. I'm so happy and grateful that I have caught this fish. That's gonna be so delicious. I think I'm gonna be fishing a bunch more this passage. I was really running low on, uh, you know, good fresh food and have some sushi tonight. Man, can't wait. Mm, look at those bones. Okay, it wasn't great as sushi, but it's really good cooked. So I gotta give a shout out to Nick Morris. His YouTube channel is Real Adventures Hawaii, I believe. He gave me that, that lure and the simple hand reel. And uh, man, it worked a treat. So thank you, man. It's a special uh, full moon tonight. Some type of red moon. Man, what a sense of accomplishment, you know? Sail all the way, you know, halfway across the Atlantic. Catch myself a fish. We got a really cool moon. Seabirds now. Haven't seen seabirds in a while. I saw a whale yesterday. I mean, this is kind of stuff. Like, why, why, why not do this? It's amazing. We were becalmed again last night. So this morning I, I decided to, to give the motor another try. I don't think we're going to have wind until later this evening. So here we are motoring along. Not too bad right now. We're definitely in the land of the jellyfish now, though. They are everywhere. I mean, every you can probably see a hundred right now from the boat. There was jellyfish before, but now they've gotten even even more in numbers. But I'll probably go for a swim a little bit, find a spot without too many jellyfish, and go for a swim around noon today. Have the rest of that fish for lunch. the sails again we have a little bit of wind i think there is a current also coming against us because we were drifting backwards at about one knot and now we're moving forwards at about half a knot 
um, according to the GPS, but it looks like we're going much faster through the water. Stop the motor so I can make a lunch break. I'm gonna make some of uh, the rest of the rest of the rest of the fish with some potatoes over here. Mm, looks so good. I think I'm eating much better than I did on my trip to Hawaii. And if I can catch more of these fish, I think it'll stay that way. I haven't even broken out the SpaghettiOs yet. <clears throat> my swim and uh, when I got out there was I was pleasantly surprised to find about five knots of wind we're sailing we got the Genoa all the way out and I need to put the main and sail the rest of the way up but uh, we're moving along it well, almost three knots I'm really happy uh, also I wanted to say the bottom paint has been holding up really good it's it's the uh, I forget what it was it was expensive but uh, it seems to have paid off. There's not a single barnacle on the boat. I think all that work, you know, a little bit has paid off. That would definitely uh, help our speed along the way. We are definitely moving faster than uh, we did before all that this work. The boat definitely goes faster now. After several days of hardly any wind, the wind is, hard, is finally keeping steady. I got a full sail up. Um, and not only that, it looks like we're headed right into a squall. And I'm just gonna sail right into it like right towards the middle and I'm just gonna leave up all the sail because that's the kind of food mood that's the kind of mood I'm in right now um, I could use some wind and it doesn't look that dark the squalls haven't been very bad out here this time of year this part of the ocean so I think it'll be fine we'll get some nice speed out of it the only downside is I I have a feeling once we get to the other side we're gonna lose all our wind for a little bit but uh, I'm sure it will come back I'm excited to get to have a little bit more exciting uh, sailing conditions the next the next week. It looks like we'll have several days of good wind before we get to the next high pressure system. Um, and if with any luck, we'll sail all the way to um, Horta with uh, before we, before the next low comes through. I mean, before the next high pressure system comes through and takes our wind. Looks like we might miss the squall after all. With the I just noticed I did a really bad job of my haircut in the back, so I tried to trim it up a little bit, but I think it's going to need a little bit of uh, help when I get back ashore. I wish I had a second mirror, then I could probably do the back better. We're finally on the, the opposite tack, so now the boat is leaning uh, leaning this leaning this way. Um, but it's no problem because I, I built this bunk so I can adjust it, so I just moved the, this uh, pipe right here. And then my bed is angled so that I can lay in it without being at a weird angle. And this has worked really good. Um, it's much more comfortable than the alternative is like a lee cloth or just to be pressed up against a, a board. Uh, but it's really nice to be level. And the, the nice thing about this kind of hammock uh, style bunk is uh, as the boat you know, levels out or tips or heels more, you or you're kind of cradled in there so you don't end up like sliding back and forth as much which takes kind of like your muscles to to stabilize yourself and it makes it hard to fall asleep sometimes I'm, I, I really like having this uh, I call it a pipe berth Man, uh, I, just, I just woke up and uh, it was getting crazy out there, so I put a reef in. I think I'm already ready to put in my next reef of just about, but I'm gonna hold off for a while because it shouldn't get any stronger than this. And it's it's crazy rough. I smashed it with my finger really good. I don't even remember doing it or know how. I just like, I was coming back into the cockpit and like, damn, my finger hurts. Like, and it's like, I must have smashed it good and not even realized it. Yeah, we're just beating to windward 
maybe 20 knots of wind. The forecast was saying we'd have had no more than 14, but uh, you know how that goes. So this morning we're uh, beating our way to windward. Got about um, 18 knots of wind gusting to 20, and it's kind of uncomfortable. You got the second reef in the sail. I mean, I wanted some wind, but I would rather it not be having to beat into the wind. But hopefully maybe the, the wind will kind of change direction a little bit so it can be a little more comfortable and go a little faster. We're only, we're only doing about three knots of boat speed actually because uh, we're having to go into the waves and stuff. Today, it's uh, cheese nachos for lunch. Just gonna melt this cheese. I'm getting there. It is day number 12. We are still beating to windward. Although at a much more comfortable pace, the waves have smoothed out a little bit and the wind's lightened up. But unfortunately we're going a little slower too. We're doing about three knots. I think we've, we've got a thousand miles to go. So I think 10, 10 miles would be, I mean 10 days would be my estimate if, if we're able to pick up the pace soon. I mean, it looks like we got some good weather coming in the next few days, but it might take longer. <laughs> it's been a while. I don't bet out here for longer than I thought I was going to. That's all right. I need to catch some more fish if I'm gonna eat, keep eating good. Uh, I'm also running out of entertainment uh, as far as uh, movies, books, and podcasts. But I got my little piano and uh, I need to edit some videos still. up to a bit of a squall. I'm gonna go out and put another reef in the sail. All right, we got fish number two. All right, this is quick. So I hove to the boat, I hove the boat too, so I could pull them in. And I'm gonna get my little fillet station out. I'll cut this guy up. All right, there's our fish. I think that might be bigger than the one, the one last time. Let's get this guy cleaned up and ready for dinner. And I got a nice big fillet out of this thing. This is gonna be, this is probably, probably three or four days. Ooh, we even got some nice, uh, some nice roe. I do like the little eggs. It's like cream of wheat. This one's a lot better raw than that last one. I think I'll still, well, I might. <laughs> I just did this one at sushi, it's so good. Man, look at all that fish. It's gonna be so good. And the same lure I used last time, the one Nick gave me. <laughs> Love this thing, it's so simple, but it works so good. Clean out of there. And I can't believe how much fish I got. That's so, gonna be so great. Um, and I, I don't even really know what I'm doing. I probably could have gotten another, probably another another half of that if I was really good at filleting it. Glad I got the, the fridge, you know? And I'm making some green beans. So I get some vegetables for a change. That fish really uh, brightened my mood. 
To be honest, I was getting a little depressed today. Just looking at how far I had and I was running out of a lot of my good food and I don't have a lot of uh, a lot more interesting movies or books to watch. I, I hope to, to catch the fish, pull it in, clean it, cook it and eat it. Um, it took about an hour and we drifted backwards five miles. I think we must be in a pretty good, good current out here, uh, which is kind of surprising, but it, it does make sense because we've only been sailing it at, at three, uh, three knots and it feels like we're going a lot faster, but the GPS says three. So we're probably in like a two knot current. Maybe not in a half. Because I was just hope too, it wasn't even like really sailing. We drifted backwards that fast that far. It's kinda disheartening when we lose five miles. Uh, it takes us an, another hour and a half to cover that. We just had a wind shift. Uh, so we're gonna do probably our this is probably the, the fourth tack of the whole trip. Although we're it looks like there's a little bit of a squall up here. Uh, let's try to sail through it with all the sail up. Doesn't look horrible. Famous last words. Alright. Alright, there's the potential squall. Coming right towards us, but maybe we can maybe we can jump out in front of it. That squall is probably the reason that the uh, the wind is shifting now, so we'll probably end up doing another tack right after we pass it, but uh, no sense going the wrong direction. The squall just kind of parked itself right over here besides us, and it's, it's blocking our wind, so I have to turn the motor on so I can motor around it because I don't want to sit here and wait to see how long it's going to take to move. We're back to sailing again. Uh, the wind has just been so inconsistent today with these squalls. There's another one. I'm gonna try to sail right through it and get us some more wind because I could use the speed. Today it's more fish for lunch. Lightly breaded with crushed goldfish and breadcrumbs. Um, just as I started cooking this, the boat decided to start, the wind finally picks up. The wind has been so inconsistent today. I had like hardly anything. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make some lunch. And then once I start getting some oil heated up, that all of a sudden the boat heals over to like 20 degrees and we get a big gust and just like start dying. I moved this stuff like onto the floor so it's like safe to cook down there. Uh, it calms down again, just that quick. Another relatively slow day. We've averaged, I think, 2.7 knots so far. And looks like the wind's gonna lighten up even more tonight, but I guess I can't really complain because we, we have been moving pretty much most of the day, just very slowly. Man, I'm so frustrated right now because I had downloaded all these extra books to my Kindle um, for this trip. And uh, so I read the first few and then I clicked on the next the next one and it says connect to Wi-Fi to download. And I'm like, but it's on there. I can see the picture of it, but it's not actually on the, the Kindle. And <laughs> there's like five my, my next five books. I'm all out of, so I'm all out of books already basically. And I'm like just barely halfway through this trip. Uh, and I had a similar thing that's happened. Oh my, I Duolingo didn't download my, my, my Portuguese lessons all the way. And uh, so then also my podcast, I downloaded hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. I was already, and then when I lost my phone, I, I synced it up, you know, the, the app and I got it all and it looked like they were all there, but then I click on them and it has a little cloud next to them. And then when I click to play it, it says it will, they'll download next time I have uh, cellular or Wi-Fi. I'm in the middle of the ocean. I got no cellular Wi-Fi for another, I don't know, like 10 days, nine or 10 days at least. <laughs> that was so depressing. Oh man, this is, this really blows. Let's see if I can get anything on the, uh, on the radio out here. I was able to get the, the BBC on this thing. This morning, the wind is finally behind us. So I got the sails wing and wing. We have a really good forecast for the next seven days. My plan is just to go straight due east to avoid this little uh, counter current, well, big counter current that uh, we definitely don't want to get stuck in, especially with the wind opposing it. And then after that, that's what I'll be for about 24 hours, we're gonna head due east, and then we'll just go straight towards uh, uh, Horta. And uh, with any luck, we'll be averaging 100, over 100 miles. I'm, I'm gonna go for 120 miles a day. That's my goal. Um, I'm gonna push it and have as much sail out as I feel comfortable with. And uh, Try to get, try to make up for this, this uh, slow last few days. We seem to be in the uh, in the 
uh, shipping lanes now because I've seen like four or five ships <laughs> every day. Uh, they, they, they never come within a mile or two. I'm gonna try to make a kind of like a fish cake. I've had some pickles and uh, some of that last fish. These uh, fish cakes came out super good. I've never tried making making them before, but uh, just using what like, kind of stuff I had left on the boat. I wish I had tartar sauce, but I got some sour cream. I put some potatoes, carrots, pickles, breadcrumbs, and eggs in there. Or one egg. And of course fish. Yeah, that's really good. I thought I might get tired of fish, but uh, it's kind of switch up the way I eat it. Definitely. Uh, Definitely a good thing. Dina, they're booking. That's the going. 20, 19 knots. Wow. That's the fastest trip I've seen in a while. I am re splicing the self steering lines. They get kind of worn where they go through the cleats and the, uh, the blocks. So every once in a while, you got to pull them out and just uh, redo them. So I'll just leave this like this for. Another couple thousand miles, and then I'll move the splice a little, maybe a few, maybe five inches down. So the trick is to make the ropes uh, much longer than so they. You can just cut a little, you can cut a little bit off, and then uh, keep using them. We're back in business here, and we're doing about five knots downwind, which is awesome. The wind's only going to pick up from here. I mean, it would be perfect if it just stayed at this at this speed, but um, yeah, it's making it stronger. So I'll probably need to put a, a reef in the mainsail at some point uh, because it tends to overpower um, and then curl the jib up a little bit after that. So I went ahead and reduced the main a little bit and we're mainly being pulled by the jib now, which is helping the boat steer. It's having a lot of trouble with these following waves. Um, but the wind vane's doing a pretty good job now. That involved going back and forth like five times to put the pole in, put the pole out, reattach the preventer. Um, I'm kind of tired of going forward now, but feeling pretty good about the way the boat's at now. I think we'll be all right. Just got to get used to this rocking, and it's rocking hard now. And I think it's going to be like this for the next few days. I raised the pole up a little bit so I shouldn't dip in the water. Although every once in a while, the, the very tip of the boom does kind of skim the water. I think that's how I broke my last uh, whisker pole. It was like we rolled. I hit a wave. It's uh, midnight. We just got hit by a pretty big wave. Threw a lot of threw, threw stuff all over the place. And it's a lot of water. A lot of water on the floor. I don't know why they always happen at night. You can't so you can't see them. Uh, the waves seem to get the biggest, and the wind gets the strongest. But I think it's going to be a long night because it's only supposed to build from here. I'm gonna build for the next few days. Just went outside and I adjusted a few things and rolled away a little bit of the jib just to, I don't know, I feel like I was doing stuff. It's about 3.30 a.m. now. I just had to go outside again. It's getting really crazy out there. The mainsail had jived over. I had it on a preventer, but, um, shoot, I'm back out there again. I just took off my follow weather gear. Something's going on. I think I'm gonna have to go out and take the mainsail down. We're just, just out of control right now. Well, it's been kind of rough overnight. Just rolling the boat's been really rocky. The waves are not are not too bad. They're about uh, getting close to eight feet. Of course, some are bigger. I think unfortunately it's gonna be too hard to make a, a real meal, so it'll probably just be a can of soup today for lunch. That's the nice thing about this kind of stove is you can make it in pretty much any uh, any condition that the boat is uh, rocking in.
So the, the waves reduced in size from eight feet to about seven feet. And, but more importantly, they, they stretched out in their period. And man, it made a huge difference. It went from just being really uncomfortable and kind of scary to uh, just uh, really pleasant. And we're like surfing down the waves, going about the same speed as them, just here in the water, whooshing underneath the boat. And as they slowly kind of rumble, the waves kind of rumble underneath us. Um, we're just like hurling through space, just kind of gently rocking back and forth. It feels so nice just to be able to like kind of lay down and sleep. That's one of like my favorite things to sleep on the boat where you're just like, you know, bouncing over waves and uh, going fast like this. We're doing about six knots right now. We're, we're, we're hauling right now and the sea is in a good place right now too. And all that pounding through the waves broke two of my eggs. So we were doing so good. Two 120 mile days in a row, which is uh, more than I've done in the last four days combined. <clears throat> and then we just lost the wind, unfortunately. And I went and put the mainsail up and uh, took out the pole. It didn't really seem to help. They're just kind of flogging around, beating themselves up. We, we've slowed down to less than one, one knot, which really sucks. Especially with, uh, we still have about seven feet foot waves and it's, I can't even go for a swim because I think it's too, it's gonna be too annoying to get back on the boat. Yeah, I don't know if I should put, if I put the sails around, we're gonna be rocking so hard. I'll probably be having, having the rails going in the water. <clears throat> so I think I need to leave the sails up, unfortunately. But supposedly the wind should come back this afternoon, maybe this evening. We'll see. I might turn the motor on actually, just kind of steady us out. So my chiller pilot was working so good until just now. And then I just started going kind of berserk. It's just like moving sporadically. I don't understand. It's not keeping, on, it's not keeping us on the right course at all. We got a little bit of wind back, so I was able to get the uh, wind vane steering again. I'm really sad that this tiller pilot isn't working. That's the second one that I've had fail. It was working so good before too. This, this, this kind of means I can't motor uh, unless I'm hand steering, which I'm not gonna hand steer for uh, more than an hour or so. Uh, I really like to use the tiller pilot when the wind, wind vane's being finicky or like when I need to work on, adjust the wind vane. So it's such a bummer. Like it doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. Like it, it turns on and the lights come on and it, it, it moves in and out. But when I click autopilot, it just, like slowly goes off course and then it has us go in circles and all sorts of things and just doesn't make any sense. We, over the last 24 hours, we were averaging five and a half knots, um, but now we've gone down to two knots, just barely enough to keep the sails open. I might could use a spinnaker, but I'd, I'd like the waves to die down a little bit before I use a spinnaker because then uh, it's just gonna flog around. And it's gonna be hard for the wind pot, the wind vane to steer good. Just uh, spilled a container of uh, breadcrumbs in my or my food storage area, so I had to empty everything out to to clean it up. And I figured it was a good idea to kind of inventory all the food I have left since I have probably six or seven more days. And I was really surprised at how much stuff I had like waste scooted back in there. Um, I thought I was kind of running low on a lot of things, but. I've got everything I need to, to make it uh, comfortably. Well, the main thing I was concerned about was running out of fruit, like, or anything sweet, you know? And, but I, I found a few extra cans of fruit, so I got enough food to have a can of fruit uh, every day and soup and something else, uh, no problem. And then if I catch another fish, I found some more of these, uh, like Trader Joe's kind of flavor things. So I might uh, maybe cook some of those up. And I got plenty of pasta and rice and all that stuff. I found some more nuts. Of course, I got plenty of potatoes and uh, more green beans too. So yeah, I got plenty of food, no worries. Things are picking back up again. We're back up to four knots and I'm happy sailor. And the sun's out today too. So I think I'm gonna stay in the cockpit for the rest of the day. Kind of lounge out here and get uh, rested up. Today's projects are uh, sewing projects. This, this um, grommet was never in the right place. It was too tight. So I had to pick off the old one and slide it over. And then I needed to sew up the whole of the old one. So I, I sewed that back together. Of course, I don't have a sewing machine, but I think the Speedy Stitcher works really good as a portable sewing machine for your boat. Oh, look at those dolphins. Oh, my God. 
Those dolphins were definitely the highlight of my day. I am, however, just getting ready to, to be there already. I feel like this trip has taken so long, and it uh, looks like we might be going into another another high pressure system with light winds. Although today the winds weren't very strong, but we've been doing surprisingly well. We've been doing uh, about four knots, or maybe four and a half knots. This boat sails pretty nice in, in light wind. We got some pretty light winds today, so I just uh, put out the spinnaker again. And I'm not able to use the electric autopilot, of course, so I had to really kind of fine tune the wind vane, but now it seems to be holding holding us on a dead downwind course. I think I might have LeVar Burton read me a, a book pretty soon. Just reeling in my fishing lines for tonight. I haven't caught anything today or yesterday, so maybe tomorrow will be my day. I think I might leave the spinnaker up overnight because it's it's behaving so well. Conditions are, I think, pretty perfect for flying it. Although I probably won't get too much sleep because I don't know every 30 minutes either the main gets back winded or it tries to turn the other way and I have to run out and reset the wind vane. But it's making us go so fast, I think it's worthwhile. That spinnaker is probably almost twice as big as the Genoa. Well, spinnaker at night plan didn't last very long. Uh, it just kept uh, kind of misbehaving, so I took it down. And I didn't get it in the water, but it's soaking wet from condensation. Everything on the boat is, uh, is really wet. So I gotta let this thing dry out, or I guess I'll probably fly it tomorrow. Um, cause it's, just, it's like, it's wetter than when it goes in the ocean, just from like a few minutes of condensation. The dolphins are back. They look like they're having so much fun. The dolphins are chasing the fish and I see them jump out of the water whenever they come. So I'm gonna put my, my fishing line back in. I don't know why I haven't had it in the water yet. I guess because I was dealing with the spinnaker. So this is my, my notification alarm. When I catch a fish, this goes tight and then it bumps in the fan and it makes a loud noise. And so I know when I catch a fish. It's day number 21, maybe. Um, I haven't been doing as many videos lately because it seems to be just more and more of the same stuff out here. Uh, things have picked up a little bit that we have done. We did over 100 miles yesterday and the day before. And today I think we're going to do the most miles of the whole trip. I'm going to put the spinnaker up again this morning just to try to get as much speed as we can. So yeah, we've only got 300 more miles to go. It's feeling like we're kind of nearing the end. 
Maybe we could do it in three days if we can keep this pace up. Forecast is looking pretty good. It's crazy that 300 miles in three days seems close, but this has been a long, long passage. Much longer than I, I planned. Still have only caught the two fish, but I've been trying the last three days to catch another fish because it's been a while since I ran out of the last one. I'd like to catch another one soon. All right, let's put this sail up. My life, my harness on so I don't fall overboard. The topping lift just uh, came disconnected from the whisker pole and it fell in the water, but uh, luckily it was still attached to the uh, the mast. Uh, so I made up a soft shackle, so I'm gonna go uh, replace my kind of dodgy previous setup with uh, the soft shackle should be really good when I attach it. Whisker pole is back in action, doing its whisker thing. Also got a ship. Whoa. Kind of close. What is that? Airbus. Airbus on board. No bites on the line today. Surprise! It's been three, three or four days of fishing with not a bite. I know for a fact I sailed through some good. Uh, some good schools of fish though, because when those dolphins came by, they were jumping out of the water. Those dolphins were chasing them out, but I, had, I didn't have the fishing line in at that time. It was still early in the morning. Then making some pasta. This is one of those days where it's good to have the, uh, the gimbal. It's a little bit rocky out there. It might make sense to pull the mainsail down because we're, we're weaving pretty hard right now uh, with the wind vane. I'm not sure how much that would slow us down or if it would slow us down at all. It's kind of hard to, to put the mainsail down when I'm off the wind like, like this, but I can do it if I need to. <laughs> we just got hit by a wave and I fell down on the floor. <sighs> there we go. More dolphins. I put out my, uh, my flags. I got the uh, Q flag up there too. Sounds like I am gonna to have to get another COVID test, which is crazy because I've been alone at sea for three weeks. I'm vaccinated and I have a negative COVID test from Bermuda, but whatever they want me to do. We're about 75 miles away. So I'll probably get in tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Today um, for lunch, it's a piece of uh, cheese melted on naan and pistachios. Land ho! Can kind of make out the mountains up ahead there. They're really faint. They're really big though. We're only 50 miles away, but unfortunately the wind is just about dead. I think I finally have to turn on the motor, unfortunately. So I figured I'd test this little connection here just to make sure that's not the problem with the autopilot. It looks like we got plenty of volts though. Darn. I'm gonna take this thing apart just in case there's anything I can do. Well, there's the inner workings. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any anything wrong in here. It looks pretty clean and dry. Ha! I think I found the problem. That does not look good. Let me see if I can clean that off, maybe. Maybe I can, like, get it to work again. Well, no luck. I took the whole thing apart and I cleaned it up. And a, some of the solder had completely dissolved and I don't have a... I've got solder, I don't have a solder and iron for like a, with like a, a fine point to, to reattach that. And also some of the resistors had like completely dissolved too. So um, let's see if I can get a new control board for it. Cause otherwise I think it should work. It's a bummer. So there's just enough wind that I could, uh, I could motor sail now. I mean, we're going really slow if I don't have the motor on though. And I'd like to get in sometime tomorrow while they're still open. So I'm going to keep the motor on. But what I did, the wind vane won't work when the motor runs is because the propeller messes up the, um, puts, I think it makes too much turbulence and it judders the uh, servo pendulum too much. But what I was able to do is I took a bungee cord and I went across here and I'm able to just balance it because there's a little bit of a uh, weather helm from the sail and I can balance the, the pressure on the tiller and I've been able to keep it on a pretty good course just adjusting it every like five minutes, which is a huge upgrade over having to you know stand here and really constantly the tiller. I caught this thing on my uh, fishing hook 
super weird. It's like a, a jellyfish or squid. Gross. You can see the lights up there. Okay, I just killed the motor. It's about 2, 2.30 a.m. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some rest and uh, we'll just drift. We're about 15 miles from Horta. We motored for seven, seven or eight hours. I think we did maybe 35 miles. So we're getting pretty, pretty close. So first thing tomorrow, I'll just radio in uh, my arrival and get the ball rolling on checking in and everything. It's been very monotonous hand steering this last several hours. Definitely looking forward to dropping my anchor once I get into Horta. I was pleasantly surprised with some wind this morning, so we are cruising along at five knots on our way to Horta. Just around the end of this island here. I'm gonna give the uh, harbor, harbor master a call in a minute here. And we'll see where they want us. It's quite nice. Horta Marina, Horta Marina, this is Pickled Herring, Pickled Herring, Channel 9. Yes, this is Marina. Hi, I'm a 28 foot sailing yacht coming from Bermuda. I like to clear into the country and come into the harbor. I'm about two hours out. Uh, you have two anchors inside of the port, as fast as possible. And after that, the will pass on the reboot to receive passport information for you to make the test. Uh, today, I think not, but tomorrow, yes, okay? Uh, yes, understood. I will anchor inside the harbor and then call you again on the radio. Uh, pickled herring, standing by channel 16, over. I got the big anchor all put together, ready to go. Getting closer. the channel we have this this other island I think it's Pico if the uh, clouds in the way that's because of a pretty high volcano I think hey there just had a fun job we got the anchor down it's kind of tight in here I would like to have more scope out luckily it's not too windy right now but I think it's gonna pick up in a day or two I'll have to probably move somewhere else I just got off the radio. I guess I have to I have to wait till tomorrow to get my COVID test. I thought I got here early so I could get it done today, but ah, it's so frustrating. And it'll probably be another day before I get the result. <sighs> so COVID thing is so stupid. I've been at sea for three weeks. I have a vaccine. I have been alone. Like, ah, there's no way I could have COVID. It's so dumb. Just climbed up the mast to get a look around here. Pretty cool. Looks like the marina's pretty packed. Whoa, Pico looks pretty awesome over there. It's gonna be in a pretty good spot, anchored over here. It's kinda tight though. Thanks for watching. Feels really good to have finished this crossing. That was quite an experience. Uh, in the next video, we'll be going ashore, meeting some of the cool people and sailors in, around here, and also getting to explore the island some. If you are getting something out of the videos and feel inclined to make a contribution, there's links in the description. Even a small amount really helps. Um, and if not, also uh, just subscribing and liking the video, it really helps the channel grow. You know, making these longer videos especially takes a, quite a bit of effort. Um, so anyway, if you if you want to help, it really uh, really is appreciated. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.